This is EDUC 4703, Problem and Inquiry-Based Learning. The title of this video clip is a Brief History of PBL slash IBL. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, in what types of programs did PBL first appear? Number two, what was the pattern of secondary PBL program development? Number three, what are the common elements in all PBL programs? PBL is based on ideas that have been around for a long time. We'll be exploring these ideas a little later in the course. However, right now, we'll be looking at the diffusion of specific PBL processes as originated in the late 1960s. Problem-based learning, as instituted in McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, can be described as an educational approach that is based on andragogy, that is adult education, philosophy, psychology, educational research, teaching and learning, curriculum design, and various other important ideas. According to Barrows, 1980, PBL can be explained as the learning that results, and this is a quote, the learning that results from the process of working toward the understanding or resolution of a problem, end quote. This approach is usually case-based, uh, complete with a small group no, of no more than eight, uses self-directed learning, and within which a group uh, is given a problem to solve. The group has a tutorial leader or facilitator who shares information rather than an expert who imparts information. In sum, PBL learning is a process of building on prior knowledge problem solving, using critical thinking approaches, and reflecting. And that's taken from Maudsley, 1989. This self-directed, collective approach is a very different way to address teaching and learning practices as compared to lecture-based designs. Before the introduction of PBL, the standard practice in medical schools was to create lecture-based curricula in which to impart knowledge to beginning physicians. This began to change in the late 1960s with the introduction of McMaster University's new approach to medical education. This mov movement, uh, this moment in history changed the way many medical schools all over the world design and implement the curricula. Dr. Howard Barrows is usually credited for being the first person in Canada to apply problem-based learning to medical ed education. Barrow's work in PBL during the mid-1960s developed from the concepts around adult education or adult learning. PBL was thought to provide a method for students to integrate knowledge across subject boundaries and to develop problem-solving skills. McMaster University is the first Canadian medical school to adopt this model. Soon afterwards, three other medical schools, in 1972, the University of Limburg at Maastricht in the Netherlands, the University of Newcastle in Australia, 1976, and the University of New Mexico in the United States in 1979, adapted the McMaster model of problem-based learning and developed their own spheres of influence in addition to the uh, Mecca at McMaster. From these four institutions sprang one of the most important educational movements of this century. According to Sabin Baden, uh, inquiry-based learning can be viewed as an approach that is closely related to PBL, but don't take my word for it. Investigate IBL for yourself using the internet as an information source. Don't forget to use multiple sources, and here is a resource that can get you started. And I put a link to 13.org um, on the screen that you can use to get started. Additional fields have been added uh, since the uh, late 60s and 70s to the PBL fold. Uh, other health-related programs began to use PBL from 1980s onwards. Veterinary, for example, veterinary medicine at Mississippi State University, pharmacy at Stanford University, um, nursing at uh, the University of North Carolina, um, and Newcastle, of course. Um, professional preparatory programs including engineering at McMaster University, Coventry University, Imperial College, uh, business uh, faculty at Maastricht, 
uh, education faculty at Stanford University in California. Other disciplines in which PBL is used around the world now include architecture, economics, educational administration, law, forestry, optometry, police science, art, and social work. PBL in education for the professions has been adopted at universities in Denmark, Finland, France, South Africa, and Sweden. Why the PBL explosion? Well, in many ways, PBL was the right response for the time in which it gained uh, a foothold uh, in medical schools. When one considers the questions that were being raised at the time about problems with tra traditional medical curricula, Many of these problems seemed resolvable with a shift to a PBL format. For example, faculty who want students to learn, to remember, to apply, and to continue to learn uh, once out from underneath their tutelage have, under the traditional format, often been disappointed. Too many students memorize, forget, and fail to apply or integrate knowledge and resist further learning. Problem-based learning curricula seem to foster the more positive attributes of learning in students. Positive attributes towards learning have been noted as characteristics of students in all schools that have implemented PBL. This does not negate the possibility, of course, that other strategies might also develop similar positive learning attributes. Another contributing factor to the success of PBL as an innovation is that in the first few schools where it was attempted, it was perceived as being very successful by faculty and students. This success in settings sufficiently different from each other gave some confidence to other schools that PBL could be applied universally, or at least at their school. In fact, there was considerable communication between the early developers of PBL and the late adopters some schools learned about the specifics of implementation of PBL at the feet of the established programs, either by visits to uh, the established programs or by consultations of faculty from the established PBL programs to the new programs, or both. This mentoring, I believe, has led to the successful of impl in implementation of PBL in many places. Then, once PBL has been attempted successfully, uh, it became a known innovation and less risky than some others, and less that some other less proven methods might have been. The theory portion of this uh, video clip can be found. Um, it's referencing Seven Baden, Maggie Seven Baden's 2007 Challenging Models and Perspectives of Problem Based Learning. And that was found in a um, book th that was edited by DeGraff and Colmos. And the name of the book is Management of Change, Implementation of Problem-Based and Project-Based Learning in Engineering. Um, and that has been retrieved from Sense Publishers. And you can see the link that is listed on the screen itself. That brings us to the synthesis questions for this video clip. And the synthesis questions are as follows. Number one, why does there seem to be a good match between PBL and the practical professions? Number two, why are the strategies employed in PBL so different than in traditional teaching and learning situations? And number three, how are the roles of the learner and instructor changed in PBL? Why might this be important? And that brings us to the end of the synthesis questions and the end of this video clip.